The term swing for the fences has its origins in baseball lingo. Batters who swing for the fences try to hit the ball over the fence to score a home run. In business terms, people who swing for the fences attempt to obtain large returns, often in exchange for significant risk. Sounds Profitable is swinging for the fences in the audio and podcast worlds. Special thanks to our partners for making Sounds Profitable possible. Check them out by going to soundsprofitable.com and clicking on their logos in the articles. Welcome to the Sounds Profitable podcast. I'm Ariel Nissenblatt. On the show today, I've got Brian and Tom in the virtual studio to discuss baseball. Just kidding. We're talking about risk and reward and how we see Sounds Profitable's role in the industry. We'll get to that, including discussions on empowering creators and companies, facilitating the overall growth of the space, and so much more. But first, Tom and Brian, tell me, how goes it by you? It's going just fine. I just uh, I just got back from uh, Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, because I, I'm that dad who flies to Greensboro, North Carolina to watch his son do a band concert. Aw. What's his band name? Uh, no, this is his, uh, he, this was the Allstate uh, High School performance. So he's he was an Allstate selection. I think this is third one. Oh, I, I, um, I imagined you showing up to like a dive bar and being like, yeah, that's my son. <laughs> yeah, that's that's my son in the dive bar on the euphonium. Just hold on. That's that could be a ska band. Uh, you're right, actually. That could be a ska band. And I am I am in Boston, which is the North American home of ska. There you go. <laughs> Things are good on my end. Everybody's getting over a little bit of cold. Sorry for that in my voice Me too. Uh, right here. Uh, the fun of, is <sighs> it a cold? Is it COVID? Is it allergies? And the answer is, there's yes. no help for any of them. So <laughs> don't worry about it, I guess, except COVID. Um, no, but we're doing good. It's uh, it's nice and warm. We're back on the bike, pulling the kids around to splash pads and stuff. So we had a really, really fun weekend and closed out. We're, this is May 1st that we're recording. Uh, we closed out uh, Tom and I's No Travel April. Uh, I think that was our, our first No Travel month this year. And then we're kicking off into a lot of travel. We have uh, the IEB podcast up fronts next week. And then later this month is Podcast Show London, and June is uh, Ad Monsters Ops event, where Tom's going to be speaking along with um, Radio Days North America in Toronto. Then I am going to Brussels for a conference with uh, the team at EGTA, and I'm super excited about that. Wow. Yeah. There's a lot going on. (laughs) Um, I will see you at a few of those events. Looking forward to it. Heck yeah. Let's get into some baseball terminology. Tom, I feel like you're a big baseball guy. I'm, I'm kind of a, a baseball guy. I'm more of a basketball guy. This is like, oh, this is my that. time of year. This is a uh, NBA. What's your team? Is it the Celtics? It is, of course, the Boston Celtics. Uh-huh. I am, but I, they're not I, in, are they? Uh, you, you shut your mouth. They are, <laughs> they are favorites to win. Oh, wow. I, but the Bruins lost last night. I do know that. They, they did indeed. And there was much wailing and gnashing of teeth uh, on the causeway <laughs> here. Uh, blood on the streets in Boston. But, uh, but the Celtics are, are very much alive. But, okay, why am I talking about baseball? First of all, what do you think of the pitch clock? I love the pitch clock. I uh, do too. It, I love the pitch clock. It makes baseball actually watchable again. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, this Big is not fan. a baseball podcast. But, no. But I did want to bring up baseball because – Recently in a Slack message, Brian said, I want to talk about how Sounds Profitable is swinging for the fences. Brian, you wrote, you really use the term swinging for the fences. I want to know what made you use that terminology. Like, why, why that? Yeah, because Tom had written an article that covered it. <laughs> and uh, and as we, we talked in our, our pre-screening here, Tom is infectious with the words that he uses in a good way. Mm-hmm. And I uh, am a creature of habit. So if something sounds good or feels good in my mouth, I get the right reaction out of it. You're going to try it on for size. I, 100%. <laughs> there was definitely, definitely um, fabulous. Didn't work out super well for me when I was younger. Uh, walked away from that one. And there's a few other ones that I had stopped uh, using. But Swing for the Fences, Tom just wrote this killer article really explaining his thoughts on what that means in podcasting and why it's so important here. And um, I I hope everybody who listens to this podcast gets immense value out of reading Tom's stuff. I think you all know the backstory that I've been such a big fan of Tom since before we even worked together. I mean, it was a lot of inspiration for Sounds Profitable. So I'm very lucky that Tom sends me over this stuff and says like, what do you think about this? And I was just like, oh yeah, I'm not totally just inspired by reading it. Let's reshape what we're thinking about based on it. Um, And so that was it. I was inspired by what he was saying and what needs to happen in this space. Podcasting has hit this 
um, let's call it teen phase, which is wild to think about when it's 20 years old, wild to think about when the advertising aspect of it is maybe like really heavily five years old. I mean, there's been ads in it forever, but like the modern day ad side of it. And, you know, it's changed, right? We don't have big moves, especially last year. Last year got after a bunch of the acquisitions and all that, it got kind of slow. And so I was inspired by Tom's article and his intent for everybody to kind of step it up. Brian, you wrote, basically, we are built to empower those who should be swinging for the fences. We're incredibly lucky to be able to support so many fantastic companies. And we want to really highlight how we do that and we'll continue to do that. So let's share some examples. How has Sounds Profitable us? How have we swung for the fences and succeeded? Um. A recent easy one is that we partnered with the team at Marketecture, who is doing a lot of um, education around um, MarTech and AdTech partners in the global ecosystem, not just podcasting. And I've started working with them to be their podcast expert. And that has allowed us to amplify the voices of fantastic partners out there into that ecosystem. We just did one with AdsWiz and it was really cool, got a lot of great attention. And that's also carried over into Digiday. So, you know, looking at Sounds Probable and realizing that like our distribution is the people that we're trying to empower. But if we can even further be a gateway to enable them to get into bigger spaces or get more visibility in biz bigger spaces and lend credibility, that's really attractive to me. So I would say that that's, that's a, a one we've done recently. Tom kicked up Data Decoded, which I absolutely love, five to six minutes every week in a video format, breaking down a piece of research often from our partners. I mean, we work with so many these days and they're the leaders putting out this type of data and explaining to you what you should grab from that and how you should use it. So it helps both the people who put out the research and everybody else who's going to market with all this stuff. And then the deep dives, which I think was a lot of the inspiration when we first started. It was how do we show our excitement and our uh, interest in this and help create assets for our partners to share that enthusiasm and to share how their platform works with the world out there. So those are the those are like the, the things we've done recently um, digitally. Tom, any, any stand out for you? I mean, the reason why I wrote that piece in the first place, uh, and I'll, I'll, I was inspired by Cleveland. I don't Tell know me more. Yeah, I don't know if if you've ever been inspired by Cleveland or not. Uh, but if you've if you've never been to Cleveland, there the sort of central plaza of Cleveland is grand. It is absolutely gorgeous architecture. It is you know just this awe inspiring, uh, just giant plaza basically that's meant to instill this kind of sense of, of grandeur and uh, I know Cleveland and grandeur don't necessarily go together very very much but um, and that that plaza uh, the sort of urban plan of Cleveland was was designed by an architect named Daniel Burnham and one of my favorite quotes by Daniel Burnham was make no little plans they have no magic to stir men's blood and presumably women's blood also. I, I think he wrote this before women were invented. <laughs> but that's kind of what the thinking is behind what I wrote a few weeks ago and what Brian wrote a couple of weeks ago and 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 what we're all about right now is that I think you, you know we need big plans in podcasting. I know there've been art there've been articles out there about are there too many celebrity podcasts? And there aren't enough celebrity podcasts. There aren't big enough stars, right? The, we, we need more of that. We need, uh, you know, more sort of big swings at things to get mainstream Americans and, and in other countries uh, addicted to podcasts, right? And, and not just sort of as a companion or a utility to something else that they're doing. And, uh, and that's kind of what the thinking is uh, at, with us, it sounds profitable is, you know, we're, we are a, a small, but mighty company. What can we do to help others make those swings? Because I think that's something that we're going to need in the next four or five years, if we're really going to meet these revenue projections that the IAB thinks we're going to get. Right. You mentioned a few months ago that they're projections, they're not predictions, right? They're not, they're not set in stone just because the IAB says it's going to be a, however many billion million dollar industry in, by the year 2024 doesn't mean it's going to come true. So how do we actually make it come true? We must swing. We must swing. Yeah. It, it, those, those numbers don't automatically happen. The line doesn't necessarily go up unless we make it go up. And 
you know, that, that takes investment, that takes great content. Um, and that takes taking some risks, you know, that, and I think we need to get back to that. You know, a celebrity podcast that I think is doing a great job right now. Do you know which one I have in mind? I do not. It's the Julia Louis-Dreyfus podcast. Yeah, it's being talked about everywhere. Huge. Yeah. Huge. And that's Swung what Lemonada, right? Is. Lemonada. And the first interview is with Jane Fonda. And first of all, it's amazing. It's not just a chat show. It's clear that Julia Louis-Dreyfus cares and that the conversation is – I just love when celebrities – honor the medium of podcasting and it's clear that she does and i think that's a great example of yeah there there are not too many celebrity podcasts if a celebrity is doing a great job yeah 100 percent. i mean that that was the the first thing i thought when i listened to dak shepherd years ago was how really good at this he is like you you nailed it like really honored the medium and he's fantastically disarming interviewer and i will definitely check out uh julia's podcast it's really good shout out to lemonada for putting that out there and it's consistently it's been number one for a really long time on apple so i love seeing all those uh white men beat out by julia louis dreyfus so shout out to julia louis dreyfus um okay let's talk about let's let's flip this a little bit where has sounds profitable swung and missed and with the with the idea in mind that it's okay to miss because we're swinging and you know that sometimes when you swing you hear the the bat does not make contact with a ball and sometimes that sucks <laughs> I let the record show that Tom and Brian are gesturing to each other. It seems that they do not believe that there have been any swings and misses. <laughs> well, I mean, I think we have floated some things past our partners that, uh, you know, maybe didn't work out the way that we thought were going to work out. Or maybe, you know, the idea didn't didn't take or, uh, you know, people weren't ready for it yet. Um, I, I think that there's still not enough information sharing in podcasting amongst the, you know, sort of the, the, the leading networks and, and things like that. Uh, we are right now doing some qualitative and quantitative research with media buyers uh, in partnership with Digiday for our upcoming second quarter study. And one of the things that really struck me as I sat in on, on some of the focus groups there w was just how little people would say about sort of client success stories and, and things like that. And a lot of that is driven by the, by their clients who, when they get something that works, they don't want their competitors to find out about it. Um, but there's still, you know, not enough information out there about success stories in podcast advertising and, you know, hard case studies with actual, you know, brands named. Um, and I think that's something that we haven't been able to, to make happen yet. Uh, we're still trying uh, we're not going to stop trying because it's it's happens and and it's evident in every other medium. So I don't you know podcasting is not a special snowflake in that regard. So you know that that's something that we're going to continue to to still work on. I I think uh, I can tell you some of the areas that we failed on. Um, uh, you know, education has been one that I've been swearing up and down that we'd get out, and it's just hard. It's hard. It's easy to, to come up with these big ideas and, and come up for swinging for the fences and educate everybody on how a download works and all of those things. But it's far easier to have an individual conversation, talk to a small group or a large group, or write a newsletter or a podcast uh, than it is to write something definitive that everybody is going to like center around, right? That's that's really anxiety inducing. And it's not Tom and I like bust our butt to to help everybody here, but like being like the guide that everybody walks through um, and that everybody on boards with really monumental thing that I don't think we've succeeded on. Um, uh, we had the audio podscape. <clears throat> that was a hot minute. That was really cool. I've been thinking about doing like a getting a wig yeah, on and that. doing that as like an 80s announcement video. Thanks to Buzzsprout doing their really funny 80s uh, like throwback video for podcasting. I thought it'd be fun to talk about like that as like a product that's coming and is going to revolutionize things. Um, nobody wanted to listen to the one minute audio bite of everybody there. Um, but I, I don't know. I mean, some of these things, the cool part about podcasting is that there's so many people coming into it and the industry's changing and all of that, that like those misses can just become something you can go swing again with a little bit more clarity. We made a joke about um, doing the ABCs of podcasting. And let me tell you, that's like, might be a thing. Like a kid. doesn't kid's feel like a joke. There's a TikTok sound that says, uh, it doesn't really feel like a joke anymore. Yeah. So these <laughs> things, sometimes they come around again with a different person or a different idea. Sometimes the people that we're repeating them to are not the same people that we originally sent them to. So taking those those swings 
um, are really important. I mean, we took a, I took a swing by asking Tom to come partner up here. We took a swing by digging into research in an area where we respect everybody who's doing the research that's out there. We dug into events. We took a swing there. Heck, we took a swing with South by Southwest. And having our event there. And I, I think it's incredibly rewarding to do that. But I don't think that a lot of companies have that luxury. I think it's scary. I think that debt and um, having ownership from a bigger company, having investors, yes. all of that, having employees. We had two employees now. Hi, Gavin and Manuela. Uh, and every time I was like, Tom, I have a great idea. I think it could be awesome or really expensive. <laughs> we had to think about like, there's there's a big difference between like Tom and I could mess up so bad that we're just like, cool, we can go three months without pay because we overspend on something that didn't return. Not ideal, but you know, you can't do that when you have employees, when it's four, when it's 10, when it's 40, a hundred, you know, uh, that grows. So, uh, I have empathy for the people on that, but, um, I, I think a big part of what we're going to do is try and help everybody who wants to swing for the fence. Let's talk about that. Who are some of the Sounds Profitable partners who have swung for the fences and have seen success from that? Things that you have been happy to shout out. I think any partner that's out there putting out research, whether it's on their own data or general data, um, is is someone that I really want to highlight there. I think that's a big vulnerability um, and, and in, insights into things. I think, you know, um, let's shout out to AdvertiseCast as a great example. They have the CPMs every quarter updated for their platform. It's blended in ways that, you know, show across their whole network and they have different calibers of shows. Um, but that's that's really visible. That That takes a lot of guts to do something like that. Um, yeah, I, I think that the partners that are really focused on trying new things and empowering other people, that's really impressive, right? By providing that information out there. Yeah. And I think, you know, companies like, uh, you know, I really admire what Barometer is doing. I mean, I, I think that's a company that's absolutely, uh, swinging for the fences, right? Just, just trying to, to, to stay involved, uh, with the dialogue, wherever and whenever they can and and to kind of you know tell the story of 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 uh brand safety and brand suitability and and uh you know i you know i hate to call out individual partners we have 130 of them and we love them all equally uh as if they are our own children uh but yeah i i just i really admire companies that uh that that play on the big stage as much as they can and uh, like actually let's shout out to the attribution companies Right. Like that's a that's a great example there. Pod sites and chartable were sold. A hole for third party data happened and those companies dove in there. Um, and I mean, that's you know, that's a risk. Right. Like, are you filling a hole? Is it a net new need? Is there room in the market for it? Will people really leave? on that end. So shout out to our partners on that space and the hosting platforms who continue to innovate and try and differentiate themselves for each other. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I I think we I think we're very fortunate to work with most of the people swinging for the fences right now. I think the last thing that I want to shout out for them is like the people who are really digging into narrative, right? Into um, the not you know every week or you know twice a week or those those episodes that are a little bit easier to sell. The people that are building content for the sake of content. I mean, the sake of being able to sell it too. We're all businesses, so I'm not not knocking on that end. But um, I think that I think that right now that you know fiction content and scripted content, kids content, family content, um, is in an interesting place because it has such high engagement and uh, metrics that we're not able to count because of a download. Right? What happens after that? How many times do you re-listen to it? Um, and what advertisers are comfortable being with it? That all that gets really complicated. So you know, I'm very very impressed by the ones who stuck with it, and I understand why others have expanded past that but that's you know that's a core aspect of podcasting and to stick with it and know your you know know what makes you different is really powerful what kinds of companies in the podcast and audio space should be taking risks and how can sounds profitable support them how is sounds profitable set up to be able to support these companies i think one of the great things about uh, about our platform is that you know we the basis of our company is actually not an incredibly risky thing. You know, I, I come from a, a field where, you know, you have a few big clients, right? A few big sort of whale clients and, and, and some little clients. And if you lose one of those big clients, you, you, have, some, you have some troubles, right? Uh, the way that Brian has really set up this company from the get-go is, you know, with so many partners, uh, you know, spending a little bit each month with us rather than, you know, having one or two big clients or three or four big clients that we've been able to spread our risk. And that lets us take some risks that lets us do some things with, uh, with like the research, for example, 
that, you know, we can fund that whether we have sponsors or not. And we're going to continue to put out research that, that benefits the industry because of that, because we've kind of built our platform on a, uh, on a stable basis with all of that risk spread out, we can actually do some things and take some risks and, and we're, and we're going to, uh, and throughout the coming year that, that hopefully will benefit the industry. And I, on an individual level, I mean, we answer every email. Every time someone replies back to anything that we send out through our newsletter, uh, anytime somebody messages Tom and I, we want to talk to all of you. I mean, a core part of Sounds Profitable is the consulting, right? So 130 partners have ex access for 30 minutes a month uh, with us. And by the way, if you're listening and you're not sure if your company uh, and you're a partner or company and you're, you're not sure if you guys are using it, like, just reach out. Let's figure it out. Let's, let's put it to use. But we... You know, we spend our time talking to new partners. We spend our time talking to existing partners and helping them. Sometimes they'll, it, it'll be as straightforward as asking like, can you help us on this sales pitch? Can you help us integrate this? Can you help us answer this question? Like Tom has participated in presenting this data to specific clients, the research that we're doing. I've been on there to help people negotiate and, and figure out different focuses on how to move forward with creative ideas. Um, it's a, you know, we're here. The next stage of it, hitting, swinging for the fences is uh, unique and vulnerable. And I don't think often there are people that can just, you know, completely neutral be in your corner. And even if you just need someone to cheer you on, that's something that we're really good at too. Uh, Tom, Tom gives great pep talks. Uh, so cheerleaders. Yeah, it's, we're, we're here. We are, I think what I can say is we are here and we're present and we continue to go out there and tell people that and show our support. And it's hard to convince people to take advantage of it all the time. But when they do, I think they see success and they feel more comfortable going for those big swings. For the fences. For the fences. Well, I think we'll leave it at that. If you're a Sounds Profitable partner listening to this and you're thinking about taking a big swing, know that we are here to support you. And if you're not yet a Sounds Profitable partner and you want to get in on the action, you want to go to a baseball game with us to continue the analogy, get in touch with us. We would love to discuss how you can impact this industry. Listeners, what risks have you taken that have paid off in this business? Let us know by writing it out in a review on Apple Podcasts. We will gladly read them aloud on the next episode of this show. Really? I did not clear that with Tom and Brian. How does that sound? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's a terrible idea. Aw. No, no. Of course we would. We'd be delighted. Only if they boost. Just kidding. Only what? Not, no, I was making a boost to Graham joke. Oh. No, yeah. uh, we don't, we're not set up for that. So no, no just send it don't, over. Don't boost our sats. <laughs> Please. Uh, or listeners, you can let us know on social media about your swings and what you thought of this episode. I am on Twitter at Ari This and That. Brian is at Brian Barletta. Tom is at Webby2001. And Sounds Profitable is at Sounds Prof News. We're also on LinkedIn. Just search for Sounds Profitable. If you want to send us uh, an email, you can reach us at podcast at soundsprofitable.com. And someone named Podcast will answer you, I think. To access our articles, product deep dives, the Podscape, our research, and more, head to soundsprofitable.com. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Sounds Profitable Podcast with me, Brian Barletta. Me, Tom Webster. And me, Ariel Nissenblatt. This episode is put together using Spooler. It's edited by Gavin Gaddis and hosted on Art19.